last news for tonight is out of Manila, Philippines. Stuck in an airport for almost two weeks, Iranian beauty queen says she'll be killed if she is deported. Um, and yes, so uh, Bahara Bahari is a contestant for the Miss International pageant in Manila. Um, she is saying that the government is trying to get her to go back, the Iranian government is trying to get her to go back to Iran so that they can um, they can arrest her for her public stance against the government. Uh, so she actually lived in the airport in the Philippines for two weeks, um, trying to not go back. The Philippines government pulled a whole bunch of shady tricks, trying to tell her that she was she had to leave right now um, because there was something wrong with her visa and they had to get her out. So she sat on the floor and she screamed um, until they they just left her alone, basically, because she was not going to go back to Iran. Um, she ended up calling a friend for help who came to her aid, which the, the government in the Philippines was saying that her friend was disrespectful um, and started screaming terrible things. They also accused Bahara of screaming terrible things um, like Jesus. I don't even think I can say what she said or what she's accused of saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't. But uh, so she ended up screaming something terrible. And she said the only reason why she was yelling that was because she was trying to get the attention of people due to fears that she would be sent back to Iran. She thought by invoking, invoking Jesus' name, it would get people's attention, as most people in the country are about Catholics. So, wow. Yeah, by the way, we uh, we managed to, when this was happening, hours before they were trying to send her back to Iran from the Philippines, we managed to create a Twitter storm around this. Uh, and bring a lot more attention and because of all the great people that paid attention to this I think that's the reason why she wasn't deported because she was just about to be deported back to to Iran and This is a woman that has been very critical of the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran uh, of the regime in Iran and She would have been in a lot of trouble if she was sent back to Iran, right? So and they they stopped that I, I don't think I, if the accusations of the things that she said in the airport is true. I don't think that was very smart of her to say those things, but it doesn't matter. Uh, she doesn't deserve to be punished for that dramatically. For like, she needs to be protected. She needs a lot of those. You know, I'm glad that they haven't sent her back. Is she still in the airport? Um, she's still in the Philippines right now. She has officially been able to file for asylum. Okay. Um, so I don't know her exact location, but she has been able to do that. Uh, just really quick, I know that Doorknob had asked me to use substitute words, um, and I think that I need to, just in order to make this sense make news, she did ask for Jesus to send the Filipinos to heaven. Oh, uh, okay. That's okay. So, yeah, but that's not very... And I know she said some other negative things about Filipinos. It's not... I mean, it's not a smart thing to do, especially now that you need Filipinos to, for your protection, right? So I suggest right. her to stop saying hateful things against Filipinos while she's in the Philippines, right? Even if she's saying them in Persian, because people will translate it at some point, right? Um, so don't do that. Uh, but Philippines does deserve some criticism, both the airport authority and the government. Um, and not all of them. A lot of people have recognized that she shouldn't be sent back to Iran. But the airport officials were kind of not very smart when they decided to contact. When First of all, they were sending her back. They were sending her back to Iran. So they were sending her back to very bad, you know, to, to Iran. And that was the fact that they even made the decision. The fact that some people at the airport thought that's a good idea. That's just already horrible. But then when they when she started making a, you know, start raising hell and she's saying, like, don't send me back. They'll kill me and all that stuff. Um, what they decided to do is they decided to contact Iran, Iranian government, and ask him if it's true that she would be in danger if she's sent back. Like, are you guys serious? Like, are you is that the, are you asking the Iranian government for like what do you think they're gonna say? Oh yeah, we're we're gonna don't send her, send her back here so we could execute her. Like, are, is that like? Do you really think you're gonna get an honest answer from the um, Iranian For authorities? Surprise party! <laughs> yeah, but so that was very strange uh, that they did that. 
Um, but I also want to remind people that Philippines is also the country that sent Ali, Dina Ali, Dina Ali um, Laslum, yeah, Dina Ali for short, the, a woman from Saudi Arabia who that was was attempting to go to Australia to go to, uh, to this was back when when was this this was in 2017 right she was, was running away from Saudi Arabia going to Australia to apply for asylum she had a stop in Manila and the the airport officials took her and sent her back to Saudi Arabia and she was begging the entire world to please save me don't let them send me back to Saudi Arabia and she's missing she's been missing ever since we have no idea they sent her back to Saudi Arabia and I'm re this is something that I'm really angry I don't know who in the Philippines uh, which Filipino officials are responsible for sending back to, to Saudi Arabia but the Philippines has this record unfortunately um, I'm glad that this out, this was, I think that as the, as an ex-Muslim community, we, we might have failed Dina, Dina Ali. We didn't raise enough noise when this was happening. Some of us did, more, a lot of us didn't, but we did learn our lesson. Uh, in other cases now, when somebody is hours away from being deported back to a dangerous place, we now are a lot more connected to raise a lot, a, a lot of attention to try to make to undo that attention, uh, undo that decision, and we did. We, I think, we were successful. I think because of the, uh, you guys, you know, I tweeted about this, and so many people retweeted me, and thanks to Sam Harris, by the way, from for retweeting me. I think he retweeting me as ma mo the main reason why this got. Uh, other people, uh, Imam Tohidi retweeted me. Um, who else retweeted me? Uh, oh my god, if I forget this, they're gonna crucify me. Um, what was his name? Oh god damn it, I'm so sorry for forgetting your name. Somebody important retweeted me that deserves attention, deserves credit here right now, but I'm forgetting his name and he's never gonna retweet me again if I forget his name. I'm gonna look it up really fast. But again, these people, and every single one, every single person that retweeted this, I really, really have to thank you because the, the, um, uh, okay, who? Let me, let me, let me see, let me see. Uh, but it's a very important uh, this is very imp the reason why i really want to bring attention to this is because of a lot of people think that you know oh twitter activism doesn't do anything oh uh, people just retweeting stuff well it might have just saved this person's life right so we have many examples of online activism actually making a difference and this is just one addition to that oh tarik fatah so sorry tarik fatah for forgetting your name uh, david silverman retweeted this um, a lot of big names retweeted this and I know a lot of people have differences with some people I hate some of these people that I mentioned I could be appreciative uh, I could be grateful of them bringing attention to this even if you have disagreements with them you could also be grateful of some people doing something that matters even if you don't like a lot of their positions okay so I am grateful even you know like Imam Tawhidi and Tariq Fatah I'm sure a lot of people in our audience don't like a lot of these people's positions but you could be against their positions on many things while being grateful for their support at the same time i think that's possible what do you guys think absolutely and speaking of um something that we're going to be working really hard on the next couple of weeks um our pakistani uh, the guy who runs our consulate in pakistan um is being brought up on blasphemy charges uh, and he's been able to escape, but not to a safe country at all. And he only has until January um, to find a place in another country that, that'll take him for asylum. Um, so we're going to be ramping up on that um, in the coming weeks. So if everyone can remember this. Remember that this worked uh, and help us out whenever we, we start pushing for his can, safety. Can we make a short video explaining that, that his situation, like a one minute video explaining his yeah. situation and what we need to do? Yeah. Okay, so because it needs to be under one minute so we could use it on Instagram as well. 
Great. Okay, let's do that. Let's try to help him out. Anyways, that was our last... Okay, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Oh, uh, sure. I needed to say something about this. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, bah- Bahari has claimed, uh, I mean, uh, not Bahari has claimed, the Filipino uh, authorities, okay, the immigration authorities, they have said that they have accused Bahari of uh, assault and battery in the Filipino city of uh, Dagupan, I right, think, right. Dagupan or something. And she has claimed that those were just lies designed to send her back to Iran. And mm-hmm. right now she is being held in uh, Terminal 3 of Nino Aquino International Airport right. in Manila. So, so okay, so good. thank you for actually bringing it up. I should have brought it up myself. But thank you. So with regards to that, first of all, we, are not in a, we don't know who's telling the truth here, right? It might be true or not. But the, the point is that even if they are true, Nobody deserves to be sent back to a country that could put you in jail for your political opinions, um, even if they have committed some crimes, right? Even ha- like that's that is a punishment that does not fit the crime. <laughs> you know what I mean? So even if that is true, first of all, we don't know if that is true. It might be because it's very likely. But even if it's true that is not a good excuse for sending a political activist to a country so hostile to political activists. Do you guys agree with that? Yes, I agree. Okay, good. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.